Hello. There has been a lot of amazing Games Workshop art over the years. And I mean a lot. So much of it is engaging, exciting, and deeply immersive. And that's not to mention compelling. I can't begin to tell you the number of armies I've collected, the number of battles I've fought, and the number of books I've bought because art told me to do it. And because of that, it feels like there's never been a better time for me to say this. I'm Jordan, this is Jordan Sorcery, and today I'm exploring my five favourite pieces of Games Workshop art. Okay, I'm actually going to roll that back just a touch. It's not actually going to be all Games Workshop art. And that's because there's a lot of it. We're talking about 40 years worth of Warhammer and 40k art, all of those board games, all of those magazines, 500 issues of White Dwarf. It's just too much. The reason I was going to look at GW art was because that was the suggestion that my patrons wanted me to look at the most. But I just think it's too much. And instead of just melting my brain by trying to go through all of this amazing work, I've decided to take it a little bit easier on myself and break it down into a subcategory. So I'm only looking today at Games Workshop box art. I will come back to magazine art and internal art and book art at a later point. So today it's just Games Workshop box art and that's going to be covering three separate types of Games Workshop box art. First of all, we've got Games Workshop board games, and that goes right the way back to the very origins of GW way back when. Then there is boxed supplement covers. These can be any expansion that was released for a Games Workshop game over the years. And finally, box and finally boxed game covers. These are the actual core games and any of the other big box releases from Games Workshop. And then there's two more rules to this. One is that these are my choices, my favorites as of right now. That could change literally next week if I were to make this video again. Things come up and I just, I love looking at so much of this art. I get taken by the whims and the fancies and whatever subject I'm detailing and researching at the time. So it's entirely possible that my list will change dramatically the next time we talk about it. But for now, these are my favorites. And rule number two is that if you like this video, you've got to come back and give it a like. And you can subscribe to the channel as well if you do not do so. Both of those things are enormously helpful for me. And if you want to share the video further, I would love that as well. Right, this is the simple one. Games Workshop board game cover art. Right back from the very beginnings of Games Workshop all the way to today. So that means that we can talk about things like Valley of the Four Winds or Doctor Who or Tower Blocks all the way up to repackaged mini games like Gangs of Camorra or Bombers over the Sulphur River. My first contender is Judge Dread from 1982. This features a cover by 2000 AD artist Brian Bolland, a classic image of the dreaded lawman. Then there's Warlock, the game of dueling wizards. I've never actually played this 1980 game by Bob Connor, but the cover has always stuck with me. I believe it's the work of Terry Oaks, and it's just the right side of Weird and Eldritch. Very cool. I'm also going to immediately bend my own rules by putting a boxed game in here that's played on a board. You might not consider it a board game, but I'm going with it. Kill Team Rogue Trader has a cover by Igor Sid that is one of my favorites of recent years. This is a crystal clear depiction of hectic horror as the Elucidian Star Striders combat the Gelopox infected. These are some of my favorite latter day 40k models and they are brought to artistic life in an amazing way on this cover. Then there is the original edition of Talisman. Released in 1983, this one had a second version of the cover by Chris Achilleos, which I do think is amazing, but I'm quite partial to the original Gary Chalk version. There's just something kind of folksy and fun about it. Those are all amazing, but I think I know what's going to win this category for me. 
The Warlock of Firetop Mountain board game was designed by Steve Jackson and based on the game book that he had written with Sir Ian Livingstone, the very first in the fighting fantasy range. This may be the second Warlock in the list, but this cover by artist Peter Andrew Jones is the stuff of childhood memories for me. And though it is a little bit sneaky, seeing as this game cover was actually a reproduction of one of the covers for the book, it feels right for this to take the top spot. And let's be honest, the rules for this five favourites video are already looking super shaky, and I think things are going to get even less orderly from here on out. Okay, so GW boxed supplement covers. There is a school of thought, I'm sure, that would say that this could include miniature boxes, but I think that that is a carnival of chaos that I cannot allow. So I'm going to exclude miniature boxes for the purposes of this video, and instead we're going to focus on expansions, supplements that just increase the playable nurse and whatever else of an existing GW boxed game, and that's the covers that I want to focus. I mean, how hard could it be? There must be, what, seven? One of my first lines of thought were the Warhammer Fantasy 5th Edition campaign packs. These have such amazing covers, one of which is the Jeff Taylor Grudge of Drong cover, which is just an absolutely fantastic cover that really stayed with me. I think it's totally awesome. And if I can continue to fish in an extremely small pond, I would also say that the Circle of Blood cover by Mark Gibbons is worth including in my favourite list. It's just totally awesome. It's maybe possible that I have been spending too much time with these campaign packs recently and it's coloured my thoughts, but both the Circle of Blood and the Grudge of Drong are just amazing. And yet maybe it's not only campaign packs that have captured my heart. I am really quite taken with the art of Paul Dainton for Blackstone Fortress, and I believe he was the artist responsible for crafting the awesome cover to the dreaded Amble expansion. This one is just dripping with atmosphere, it really fills me with the appropriate level of dread, it's just the perfect accompaniment to the contents within. From a much earlier age is the Fangorn painted cover to Terror in the Dark, the expansion for Advanced Hero Quest. This was also used on the Skeleton Horde box set, so a box of miniatures did sort of get into the category, but not really, because it's Terror in the Dark that has prompted me to include it, and what an amazing cover it is. Just a really fantastic vision of dark, evil skeleton forces marching to bring about your doom. The second Hero Quest supplement was called The Return of the Witch Lord, and it was released by MB Games in 1991. So it doesn't technically count as a Games Workshop game, but it was developed by Games Workshop, and GW Books also published a book of art that included the cover. That was by Les Edwards. So I'm going to allow myself to let this one through. I love this piece, the narrative continuation of the original box art, the Witch Lord looking like a total creeper. It's just really brilliant. The Defiant Barbarian, it's all just totally brilliant. In fact, I like this cover so much that I actually went out of my way to get hold of the original Jigsaw edition of it. It's great. Now, I kind of cheated by putting the two campaign packs in there, but I'm going to do the same thing again when I cheat this time. And that's because I wanted to call out all of Dave Gallagher's amazing portraits that were used as covers for the Warhammer Quest character boxes. They are all ace. If I had to choose a single one, which is very cruel of you to make me do this, but I would probably go for the Chaos Warrior. But despite all of those amazing expansion covers, I think that my final selection has a little Wolfrup flavour that is absolutely the best and most favourite of mine right now. I'm talking, of course, about Ian Miller's unforgettable cover for Death on the Reich, a scenario supplement box for the first edition of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay and a part of the Enemy Within campaign. There is something so purely Warhammer about this cover, capturing both the geography and the architecture of Warhammer's old world, but also including that ever-present weirdness and the danger that watches you eternally from the river's banks. It's an incredible piece of work. I truly, truly love it. I think it's just so, so Warhammer. I was actually lucky enough to chat to Ian Miller quite recently, 
That's an interview that's going to be released on the channel soon, and we talk about his work for Games Workshop, as well as some of his work in Hollywood, and it's really a fascinating conversation, so keep an eye out for that one. Right, GW Boxed Game Art. This is a very contentious competitive category. There is a lot of amazing stuff to choose from. I think I know where your head went to first. Squelch, one of the famous troll games from 1989. I'm not actually sure who was responsible for the suitably gross cover art for this game, but it does exactly what it's supposed to. It's full of life, it's full of character, it's full of humour. It's full. But despite what you may believe, Squelch cannot take the top slot. There's lots of other amazing pieces, including Hero Quest. Whilst technically an MB Games release, as I said before, Stop reminding me of it, guys. This one features another iconic cover by Les Edwards. It's very tough to beat this. I think it is awesome, and I love it a lot, and this has been a huge, huge part of my childhood since the very beginning of Jordan Sorcery. But it's not at the top of my favourites list right now. The spiritual successor to Hero Quest, Warhammer Quest, also had a phenomenal cover. This one was by Jeff Taylor, who produced some pretty foundational artwork for me. That mid-90s era was when GW formed core memories for Little Jordan Sorcery. This is what helped form my full opinion and appreciation of the Warhammer world, and that is why this is in the list near the top. It just screams adventure, and it's got that Conan-esque barbarian with some come get some bravado that is perfectly matched to the hubris of every player I've ever seen play the Barbarian. Plus, there's always the eternal mystery, where was the dwarf? Okay, now this next one is actually two separate games that I've got vying for the position, not that this is really ranked, but they are almost neck and neck and they're both naval games. John Blanche's cover for Battlefleet Gothic is replete with Blanchean richness and texture that you would expect from an artist who has defined Games Workshop games' look since the very beginning. There's wings and skulls and a hundred rockets and explosions, and the scale is magnificent. But I'm struggling to decide if I prefer it to this incredible Man of War cover, also by Jeff Taylor. This one features just the incredible idea of a Warhammer battle. This one manages to capture the incredible idea of not just another Warhammer battle, but one that takes place at sea. Orcs and dwarves waiting to charge across the bow of their ships, it's amazing. And like many great GW game covers, it just goes to show how chaotic and epic the maelstrom of combat must be in these worlds. That is what my Warhammer feels like. Don't clip that, but it basically captures what I think the Warhammer world would, would be like. It's just, it's the essence of it. I think it's amazing. It was very tough not to put that in the top spot. As much as I love Battlefleet Gothic and Man of War, they just didn't quite pip the post, pip over the post, pip and post. And that's because my favorite game cover right now is Warhammer 2nd Edition. Released in 1984, it came with three beautifully illustrated rulebooks inside, but it was the box that featured the magnificent art by the great John Blanche that really blows me away. This was an almost impossible choice. I am certain there will be folks shouting at the screen saying that it should be the first edition box cover by Blanche or the fourth edition, another Jeff Taylor piece, and they are both incredible and would absolutely on any other day be at the top of this list. But it's not any other day, it's today. And today is the day that this wondrous piece of second edition art with its vibrancy and its color has just, it just speaks to me. The humour and gruesome danger of the Warhammer world that's right here on this box, the brutality that's on full display, I don't know that we've ever quite matched that with later editions of Warhammer Fantasy or 40k's equivalents. This one just has a certain something. So there you go. I didn't give you five favourites so much as I gave you like 16, so I don't really know if there was any real point to this. I guess we got to look at some amazing art, I got to dwell over 
which were my favourites, and I gave you three categories with f sort of top favourites, I suppose. In any case, I hope that you've enjoyed this really quite random exploration of Games Workshop boxed art and which ones sort of speak to me the most, have stayed with, the me, with me the most, and are my favourites right now. It's okay if you disagree, but if you do, why not share below in the comments which were your favourites? I would love to hear them. If you want to support the work I do here on the channel, feel free to check out my Patreon to join my Discord. I've also got some Element Games affiliate links. You can find all of those in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Jordan, and this is Jordan Sorcery. You know, it's so difficult because you look at a box like this and you just think, yeah, that should be the top of every single category. Doesn't matter if it fits in those categories, it's just that awesome. And then you look at another box and have the exact same feeling. So I guess all of these artists have just done awesome work and, <laughs> you know, well done.